Hi, and welcome to MCTV's Let's Talk. I'm Mike Stanzillis, Vice President of Membership and Business Development for the Morris County Chamber of Commerce. And today is part of our Member Spotlight series, and we're really happy to have Tommy Hilkin of Tommy Hilkin Productions here today as a Member Spotlight. Hey, Tommy, how you doing? Hey, Mike, doing great. Great, great to have you here today. So Tommy Hilkin, Tommy Hilkin Productions, has been educating and entertaining audiences around the world for over 30 years. Tommy's innovative laugh and learn style uses humor to teach powerful, positive, impactful messages that audience remember. And certainly, I always remember what you say, Tommy, so um, don't forget that. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Let's talk. Let's talk, yeah, let's talk. So um, I just wanna thank you for being an ambassador as well. And you know, Tommy's been a member here for uh, over 10 years. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, uh, listen, let's get started. There is a great. rumor. There's a rumor. I don't know if Just it's true rumor, not, sure. floating around the chamber <laughs> that you were a clown, a professional clown. What do you got to wow. say? Wow. <laughs> you know what? I've always been a clown, and rumor has it that I turned professional. Yes, my whole life. I actually did. I, I was an international entertainer, clown. I represented the United States at the International Clown Festival in Nagasaki, Japan throughout the 90s. Not too many people know about it, but I've been a lifetime entertainer. That's mm -hmm. where I got my stage presence. But yeah, as a professional clown, trained, circus trained, professional clown, it brought me everything and everything I could have ever dreamed of. And I will say this to you, uh, it may be the greatest time of my life that I ever had. Wow, wow. So. We're going to work our way towards, you know, what you do for your customers and, and, sure. and how you help your businesses that you work with. But let's stay with how you got there, okay? So, you know, tell us about your life on stage. It's quite an interesting career. Yeah, it, it's a great career. I, um, I married young, had three kids. I was driving a truck in New York City, and uh, a friend of mine showed me a magic trick. Uh, believe it or not, I was 29 years old and he showed me a magic trick and, and I just fell in love with it, right? That I could interact with people and do something cool because I just love people. It's been the story of my life. I love being with and around people. So I, I hooked onto this magic trick and within six months, believe it or not, within six months of doing that first magic trick, I started to do it and getting paid for doing it. I can remember the first birthday party I went to. So I fell in love with it. I had no fear or doubt stepping up and doing it in front of people. Like I said, I was just there to enjoy myself. So uh, it was about you know, midway through 1989, I started to do it, let's say professionally, but I did it part-time. I drove the truck. I had three kids while I was doing this. It took me six years to decide to jump into full-time entertainment. But when I did, I never looked back. But I held on to my job, you know, fear, doubt, and uncertainty of having three kids and a family. You want to make sure that everything is secure. Uh, but then I grew it from there and never looked back. So, you know, you mentioned something really, really interesting, and I want you to talk about that. And that's fear and mm. doubt, right? So right. we're going to talk about public speaking because this is what you do and this is what you do. Right? This, is, this yeah. is your world. But you mentioned fear and doubt. So... What is it with fear that holds so many people back when it comes to public speaking? Well, you know, most people do too much thinking. They overthink everything. And I had mentioned uh, a few times during my presentations, most people do not have a fear of public speaking. Mm -hmm. When I take a survey, I'll find out and I say to people, so what is, the, what is it that bothers you about public speaking? And most people will fill in, I feel like I'm being judged. So what I've noticed over the years is that most people don't have a fear of public speaking, but they do have a tremendous fear of being judged. And the answer to that, and I share with people, is if you have a fear of being judged, get over it. Because everywhere we go, everything we do, let's face it, we're being judged. Yeah. So, you know, get over it is a real simple answer. Sometimes the simplest things are the hardest things. So. Right get over it, right? What do you do to help people get over it? Well, the fear of being judged is a mindset, right? We've yeah. always felt that way. And I look at it this way. I could take it back to school, right? When you think about getting your report card, I say this all the time, Mike. 
what everybody used to do was, you know, you did great in four subjects and, and bad in one, but the one that you did bad in was in red, it was circled, it was highlighted, right? So right there you look at it and say, my goodness, I did good in everything else, right? But we always focus on the negative of what, you know, what bad could happen. What I try to get people to do is to shift their mindset of to what good can help, what good can happen. When you're giving your presentation, how can you help someone? I always say this, everyone has a story that can help someone else. The secret is to get the courage to go out and tell it. And when I look at it this way, it's not about me anymore. I want to give you three things I learned about public speaking. When you first start, number one is you think it's about you. Look at me, look at me, right? right then you right. grow a little bit and it becomes about your message. Not only am I good, but I got this fantastic message. Look at me, right? But when you really make it as a professional and as a public speaker, you'll realize it's all about your audience. Absolutely. You and your message is only there to have an impact to help your audience. So when you think about it, how can you get out of yourself? How can you get out of fear? I just remind myself all the time, I'm just here to help some people. You know, that's so true. And it's so interesting that you bring those years of, of performing uh, right. on stage. And when you're performing on stage, it is about the audience. And so you've taken that lesson and brought that to the world of public speaking. Um, so right now, we're speaking to each other through yep. a little lens. We're looking at screens. Um, <laughs> what, you know, what can you tell us about this new era of communicating and public speaking? Well, the one thing I will always say is no matter what, never wing it. I don't care if it's a live presentation, a Zoom presentation, never wing it. Prepare yourself, have an idea of where you're going to go, how you're going to take it. That's the message. You should always prepare your message that you know where it's going to flow, how it's going to go, you know the questions, that type of thing. Practice, 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 and when you're done, practice again. What I feel people are doing with Zoom is they're just hopping on. Oh, I'll get through this. But again, I think like a professional, don't let this hurt your brand. The one thing I started to talk to people is be careful. You're doing Zoom calls. Don't hurt your brand. What is your brand? Live up to your brand and, you know, put your brand out there like you would do it if you were live. So if you wear a jacket and tie, right, you know, make yourself look the same way. What is your brand? Most people struggle with that. But as far as the message goes, be prepared. But the messenger, if you think about it, what are we seeing? You know, from our chest up, sometimes it's just your chin up, right? So just like I teach in public speaking, nonverbal skills are essential. You know, still thinking about eye contact, sitting up straight, having a smile on your face, eyes open, paying attention, right? You'll see if you watch videos of people doing Zoom calls, some people are out in the and woo, where'd they go, right? They're just there, they're just sitting there. But the idea is you have to present like it was live. You and I right now, you're my audience. I need you to feel my energy, my passion, what I'm excited about. That's how you keep people interested during Zoom calls. But think about it. Facial expressions are huge right now. So get, yeah. get, get good at them. Huge. So, you know, prepare, huge. prepare, prepare. You and I prepared yeah. for this, right? We had a, we yes, had a we call did. the other day. We yeah. went over what we want to talk about. Um, and we were prepared. But I also feel like we're also able to go off book off script and be prepared to be spontaneous also right so right. a clown has to be spontaneous and i'm sure that you learn that that ability to improvise but it doesn't it's not a substitute for having a plan uh would you so would agree good with that no so good i just had this conversation with a fellow entertainer this morning there's right. a difference between being prepared and going in and then ad-libbing now if you're I will say this, if you're less than a professional when it comes to presentation skills and giving a presentation, if someone asks you a question and takes you off track and you can't get back, what are you going to do? Someone like myself, I've been doing this forever. If there's a distraction, I can focus on a distraction, but I know how to bring myself back and get things going again in the right direction. Mm -hmm. So again, if you're not a professional at public speaking, be careful of your distractions. Make sure you have everything lined up and follow the agenda that you planned because some people can get lost and not, you'll hear people say, oh, where was I? Uh, I'm sorry. And they're asking their audience, where was I? <laughs> you know, sure. because they got distracted, lost their trend of thought. Yeah. yeah. But that's, ad, that's... yeah, never confuse uh, ad-libbing 
for not being prepared. Yeah. But if you're not good at ad-libbing, stay away from it until you get better and better and better at this. I, I think you're so good at it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. So um, tell me a quick clown story because we're getting close to the end here. And I just want you to share with the audience, you know, I, uh, people find that fascinating, I'm sure, because, mm -hmm. you know, we don't know many professional clowns. So what's a quick clown story you can share with us? Well, just like anything else in my profession, I'll share this with you. Once I realized I was going to be a clown, I had set my mindset on being the best clown possible. And what was mm -hmm. that? I was going to seek out mentors. I was going to find people doing it, people who having success with it, right? I wasn't just going to be somebody who was like throwing makeup on. I wanted to know the ins and outs, the true of being a professional clown. I know that sounds funny to many, a professional clown, but there is a level where you go out where people are going to hire you for bigger bucks than the birthday party clown because you're carrying this. Like I said, I went to Nagasaki, Japan. So I want to share that. Here's a quick clown story for you that you might like. Okay. I went to Nagasaki, Japan, and I was all excited. I was chosen to represent the United States. I was thrilled. I was going to do performances, still walk, still walking. Only one challenge. You know what that might have been, right? You don't I like sushi? I don't like sushi, number one. Number two, I don't speak Japanese. Ah, uh, that's a big one, yeah. <laughs> so here I am. All my comedy that I've ever delivered was verbal. Um, I'm very good verbally with comedy and, you know, saying things to me, I say things back and we have a good time. So I go to Japan and instantly I had to learn. And it's one of the things that I implement in my public speaking training is the power of nonverbal skills, communicating, body language, eye contact, smiles, right? Gestures. These are so powerful to connect with the human being and what they do more than anything Nonverbal skills is they connect with people on an emotional level. And that's how we connect with human beings, right? To, through tonality, through body language, right? If you're excited and you're showing it, somebody's going to buy into your excitement. If you're flat and showing it, somebody's going to buy into your flat and showing it. So I had to learn how to express myself without saying a word. One of the greatest lessons I ever learned because it's carried into my other professions. Fantastic. So I think, you know, if, if, if our audience wants to learn about public speaking, uh, I can't imagine anyone better than Tommy Hilkin to learn that from. But you do more than Tommy Hilkin Productions does the more than just teaching about public speaking. Right. You know, we do. We have speakers, trainers and entertainers. That's what we've done our whole career. But we teach people how to sell better. One of the phrases I use all the time is, why would you come to Tommy Hilkin Productions? I look at it this way. Three things we say. Step up. If you need the courage or you need a little push to step up when you need to step up and give a presentation, we can help you do that. If you need to stand out amongst the crowd, once you step up and stand out, wow. You know, and people are starting to notice you. You know as well as I do, it's noisy out there. How do we get noticed? So we help people step up, have the courage. We help you stand out, becoming a better presenter. And when you can step up and stand out, you'll be able to sell more. And anybody in business, those three things fit right into every single business person on the planet. You must step up. You must stand out. You must sell more if you want to be successful. So that's what we help people with. Great, great takeaways. I love it when we close our show with some key takeaways. Step up, stand out, sell more. So, Tommy, how can we, uh, our chamber members, get in touch with Tommy Hilkin Productions? Well, thank you, Mike. I appreciate our time together. You can reach me at www.tommyhilkinproductions.com. That's my website. Every way to contact me is on there. Take a look. If we could help in any way, please let us know. So I want to thank Tommy Hilkin. I want to thank the members of the Morris County Chamber of Commerce. If you are interested in doing a member spotlight, just reach out to me at mike at morrischamber.org. And once again, thank you. Step up, stand out, and sell more.